Welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll be looking at how to use a free plugin that analyzes the EQ curve of plugins and hardware. EQ Curve Analyzer needs at least two instances of itself to work. One before the effects you want to analyze will send a test signal, and the other at the end of your chain will analyze the modified signal. Note that it is not possible to use a plugin while analyzing it. The analysis is completely isolated between the two instances of EQ Curve Analyzer. The first one has no audio input, and the second one no output. You will not hear anything during the analysis. All you need to do is to insert it between two instances of EQ Curve Analyzer on the same track and with AutoSync enabled. Make sure the first instance is the one set as a signal generator and that both are in the same group. AutoSync keeps track of the sample index of the impulse in the audio buffer and shares this information with both instances, assuming they are working on the same buffer length. The only difference here is that you will have to set the latency parameter in order to see a meaningful phase response. In most cases, just clicking the Suggest button will work. However, this Suggest feature is not perfect and cannot be perfect and will fail to detect the exact latency for extreme EQ settings, for example. In that case, if you know the exact number of samples, you can type it in the latency text box. If you do not, gradually increase the latency parameter until the phase curve is as simple as possible. Analyzing hardware. You will need two tracks with one instance on each. One that will send the test signal to your outboard unit. One that will get it back. Do not forget to enable track input monitoring. Finally, set the latency like you would for a plugin except that AutoSync will not work properly here, disable it. Meaning that you are not only reporting the latency of your audio interface but also compensating to synchronize the two instances of EQ Curve Analyzer here. Do not overthink it. Just increase the latency parameter until the phase curve is as simple as possible. Group. All EQ Curve Analyzer instances can share parameters. If they are set to the same group number, many parameters are linked between them, so they can stay calibrated to each other. Groups are useful if you want to use multiple pairs of instances at the same time. Underlay. The underlay allows you to display the current analysis data of another group of instances. Its value is the number of the other group you want to see. For example, if you analyze a plugin using group 1 and another one using group 2, you can see both in the group 2 analyzer instance by setting its underlay to 1. Freeze. When enabled, the underlay spectrum is freezed and stored in the plugin state. Note that you can set the underlay to the same group as the instance. Export. Clicking the export button copies the spectrum data of the current group to your clipboard in CSV format. FFT size. This is the resolution of the analysis. There is a trade-off between frequency resolution and temporal resolution. Higher size equals better frequency resolution. Lower size equals better temporal resolution. Mid-side analysis trick. If you try to analyze a mid-side EQ with EQ Curve Analyzer, you will notice that it does not work out of the box. The reason is that it sends the same impulse in the left and right channels. There is nothing in the side channel after mid-side encoding. The trick is to arbitrarily interpret the channels as mid-side, while keeping in mind that the Analyze plugin still works with left-right input and output, meaning that you need to wrap it with another mid-side decoder slash encoder pair. From EQCA to mid-side decoder, to analyzed mid-side plugin to mid-side encoder, finally to EQCA. How EQ Curve Analyzer Works the test signal of the generator instance is made of repeated impulses. An impulse is a single sample followed by silence. It is then processed by what is analyzed. This modified impulse is the impulse response of the analyzed system. Finally, the analyzer instance transforms it to the frequency domain and displays it as magnitude and phase. Explaining linear systems is beyond the scope of this user guide, but keep in mind that if nonlinearities are introduced, the frequency response cannot define the system completely and the test is corrupt. A non-optimal test can sometimes still give useful information, but you need to be careful interpreting it. If there is too much non-linearity, you may not be able to extract any useful information at all. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. See you in the next video.